Hello again and welcome back to part two of my tour of the gear cupboard, um, which you can see behind me. I think now probably is a good time to kick off by showing you the camera that I was dying to own for a long time once I'd got into the Micro Four Thirds uh, system, and that is the Olympus Pen F, which has gained sort of a cult following and um, it's extremely popular. As you see it here, I've got the Olympus 17mm 2.8 uh, pancake lens on there. It's a moderate wide angle, nothing fantastic. But once I got the camera, just let me turn it off because this lens retracts when you switch it off. Um, when I got the camera, I bought it body only from my local retailer, Wilkinson's, and I did get it for a good price, but they're not cheap. Um, I decided I'd make a little prime lens outfit for this. So if I do take this out, when I do take it out, it comes with the 17 millimeter 2.8, so a moderate wide angle lens. Then it is normally also the lens which I, is filming me now, that's the Panasonic Lumix Leica 1.4 25mm and then the third lens is the Sigma 60mm 2.8 DN Art lens. So it's that combination plus the 25mm which is filming me now and that gives me, uh, if you like, my holy trinity of prime lenses, moderate wide angle, standard short telephoto. And with those three lenses, I find I can cover the subject matter that interests me. Nine times out of ten, anyway. Well, forgive the change of angle and outfit and appearance. I've been humming and ahhing for quite some time uh, whether to do a completely separate video on this dilemma that I find myself in over these two lenses. Um, I'm still undecided and I'm going to wait until the new year before I make a final decision. But what I wanted to do was just briefly discuss the um, 12 to 50 Zwico easy power zoom lens which I've owned uh, since almost the beginning of my micro four thirds experience. Um, a fantastic lens um, as you probably know I take it everywhere with me um, when I'm using the EM1 either the Mark 1 or Mark 2 version. I've absolutely loved it. Now the Pro 12 to 40 2.8 lens that I got for a very reasonable price. I've also fallen in love with. Now, they are very similar lenses in many respects. Now, what I have done is to simply go down to Liverpool City Centre, the Queen Square bus station, and just taken a couple of comparative 
images on these two lens from exactly the same standpoint. And I wanted to just talk you through the results. So this first one is taken on the 12 to 50 and it's at the 50 mil end of the range, just a, a nothing shot, uh, but with plenty of detail in it. And I homed in on the bus stand number four, right in the center of the image. Now, if we compare that to the same image taken on the 12 to 40, you can see straight away the difference in magnification. Now, it may not seem a lot, but when you're actually out in the field using these two lenses, that 10 mil difference does make a difference. Those were both taken at 50 mil. I didn't bother comparing the two at the 12 mil end, but the 12 to 50 here, this is the center section of the image. Um, and you'll see that I have deliberately cropped in onto the number four stand. And if we compare that to the uh, same image enlarged using the 12 to 40, there is a difference. The 12 to 40 is undoubtedly sharper, I have to admit. Not a huge difference, but nevertheless, it is noticeable. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to pick it up uh, when you watch this on your TV or um, monitor, uh, but there is a visible difference when it's magnified to this extent. So from a point of view of <laughs> resolution, I think the 12 to 40 probably quite understandably gets the verdict. Now, I then went in and uh, enlarged the top left hand corner of this image. Uh, this first one that you will see is the 12 to 50. And both these are wide open by the way. So um, it's at 6.3 with the 12 to 50. And of course it's still f2.8 with the 40 mil. Now, if you look at the difference between the two images, I'll um, put them up side by side uh, in the video for you to have a look at. And the difference is more noticeable here. The 12 to 40 is sharper, even at 2.8, than the 12 to 50 at 6.3. I'll hand you back to my better dressed colleague now and uh, he can wind up with this um, comparison of the two lenses. Now the 12 to 40 doesn't have a dedicated macro button, but nevertheless, it focuses really close, not quite as close as the 12 to 50, but it's darn close. It's 2.8 throughout its range. This is 3.5 to 6.3. So in low light, this is gonna beat this. I'm still undecided and uh, in the new year I will make a decision whether I keep both or sell one or the other. Please help me because, <sighs> you know, they're both fantastic lenses and uh, I've got nothing but praise when it comes to uh, looking at these. I'll show you some images taken on both right now.
This I got secondhand for well, not very much money. It's a 1980s vintage Sigma 400 millimeter fixed telephoto lens. And it is, what is it? Remind me now, it's 5.6 maximum aperture. Uh, I bought it on a whim and um, it's tatty, but the optics are fine. The thing is, it's a Canon EF fitting lens. So I've purchased an EF to Micro Four Thirds adapter. The only major snag is the fact that there is no aperture control on this lens. So every time I use it, I'm shooting it wide open. It's a bit awkward to say the least. <laughs> You will be seeing it again, but it's not going to get used very often. <laughs> However, once I bought that, I realized, you know, the reach of a long lens. That's 400 mil, which is equivalent to 800 on a micro four thirds camera, which is pretty powerful. <clears throat> so I opted for something much more compact. This is the Panasonic Lumix 100 to 300. It's f4 to 5.6. This has got image stabilization built in. The Olympus bodies have IBIS in body image stabilization, but you can't use the two in combination uh, when you mix the lens with a different body. Cracking lens, uh, trombone's an awful lot, but just how compact is that? Bear in mind, this is 200 to 600 mil equivalent in full frame terms. Now, if that doesn't indicate to you why I went down the route of micro four thirds, nothing will. A couple of oddball lenses for you to look at now. The first is a second-hand 28mm wide-angle lens from the 1980s. It's actually, this one is badged by the company called Sirius. 28mm 2.8, originally designed to go onto the old Olympus film cameras, so it's an OM uh, mount. And I bought that, not so much for the lens, but I did spot on the internet um, a tilting micro four thirds to Olympus um, mount. So with this, I can uh, alter the position of the lens. I can tilt it in various ways, up, down, left or right, and that will defocus parts of the image. So it was the mount that I wanted, and I just happened to get this 28 mil uh, for 10 quid. Um, so it gives me a 56 mil equivalent standard, if you like. A um, bit of fun. I've used it once or twice. I should use it again. Now the other probably oddball lens that I want to show you is this, the Camlan. The 50 millimeter f1.1 Camlan. This is the Mark I version. Uh, which I've shot several times now. You've seen some images that I put on a uh, video earlier this year. Look at the front element on that, isn't it beautiful? Nice big lump of glass. Metal construction, uh, manual of course, it's not auto-focusing. So when you actually um, try and focus a lens at f1.1, you do need to make heavy use of the focus peaking and magnifying facility on your cameras.
Ah, we're getting to the end now, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, a couple of oddballs. Um, something which is very um, popular is the use of lenses designed originally to go on 16mm cine cameras, the old C-mount lenses, and I invested in a couple. They were being sold uh, as one lot on the internet. Um, I produced <laughs> a very amateurish looking video uh, a good few months ago using these lenses and um, they're fun. Again, they're not sharp. They're both, these are both 25 millimeter. If I can find it, I'll splice in a little bit of video shot with these lenses on the EM1 Mark II. And finally, uh, thank goodness I hear everybody say, two lenses that I want to show you. First and foremost is the uh, Olympus Zuiko, the 30 millimeter macro. Do I use it as a macro lens very much? <laughs> Guilty, no, I don't. Um, I don't do an awful lot of macro work and I suppose really I ought to get, um, get stuck into it a bit more, to be honest with you. In terms of close focusing, this gives you maximum magnification of 1.25 times. So it will do more than life-size imaging in a very compact little lens. Lastly, but by no means least of all, is my lovely Lauer 6mm f2 ultra wide angle 0D lens. Uh, wow, I mean, I've been absolutely blown away by this lens. Uh, those of you that saw my original sort of uh, review of it will know that I, for the life of me, couldn't get the lens hood off it when I first got it, it was such a tight fit. But now that I've managed to do it, it's just wonderful. Um, prior to this, I had the Samyang 7.5 mil manual focus lens. This is manual focus as well. Um, the difference is that this gives almost no distortion. So if you've got straight lines in the field of view, they are rendered as being straight in the actual image. With the Samyang, that was not a rectilinear lens, as they're called. It has the contacts on the mount, so it will talk to whatever camera I mount it on, and it will um, not only give me EXIF data to refer back to in the future, but it means I can also use the camera in all modes, really, manual, aperture, shutter and program modes. At 6mm manual focusing is not an issue. This will focus ridiculously close. That's the only time you have to worry about your focusing. Absolutely fantastic lens, far from cheap, but my goodness me, it's, is it a keeper? <laughs> Damn right it's a keeper.
So now, apart from things like my GoPros and selfie sticks and miniature tripods and battery charges and things, that's about it. That's what goes up to making this channel work at the moment. As you give me your opinions on the, the two lens quandary that I've put myself in, it might make me decide to sell the EM1 Mark I with one of those lenses. I don't need to from a financial point of view, but I just hate having good quality kit not being used. But there we are. That's the end of part two of my gear roundup. I think it's going to take us up to uh, pretty close to Christmas. And um, I think there'll be a short video for the Christmas period. But um, in the meantime, you know what I'm going to say, because I do get boring, don't I? Enjoy your photography. No matter what kit you have, whether it's the very latest, the most expensive kit, remember the most important camera you will ever have bought is your very first one. Take care, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.